So, how old was the child? So, 20,000 take off from the family. He got one from the balance. 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 Okay. I was one to the daughter and lost her for maybe four four years before she died. Okay, she died of the cut and the mm -hmm. yes, the address. So the lady that died is his daughter. Yes, the daughter now. She is his daughter. And then now it's June. She got got the loan. She got the got the deal. She got the got the four. She 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 got the Good morning, you're welcome to another episode of The Heart of the Matter. Today we have as our guest Dr. Jo Odumaki. She's the president of Women Arise. Um, and today we'll be talking about a, a very important matter. 
recently there was an incident in Ejibo in which some women were tortured and um, we want to look at the issues that, that arise out of that incident and how uh, we, that's all of us, including yourself on the other side of the television camera, can, can do something to ensure that there is justice in our society, particularly for women. What is your interest in this matter? You are a, a, the, the, a bystander. You come across this information. What is it that you are seeking to achieve by your advocacy in this matter? Honestly, what's interest is justice for these women that have been dehumanized and have been sodomized. Apart from that, those that carried out, that perpetrated these heinous acts, because it has almost become a recurring decimal where we have jungle justice and the inability to bring people that have perpetrated these heinous acts have emboldened all those who do that. So we want to ensure that they fish out the perpetrators and when they are fished out, the, the, the Lagos State Government has criminal law. The judicial process must be made to take its course so that the full weight of the law must be brought to bear. If that happens, it's going to serve as a deterrent for others. Again, women. These women are vulnerable. They refer to them as the weaker sex. Why should we have like eight men or even, even if it's one man? How can we have them treat these women as if they are not human beings? How can we have people that behave like beasts that are walking on two legs? Because it's unimaginable. So another thing is there must be a change of mindset. A mindset that says when things happen, jungle justice must always take place. Apart from that, the criminal silence our people have been keeping. This thing happened in February. We didn't get to know of it till December. It happened in November, November 11th? No, December 11th? no, no. This heinous act was perpetrated in February. So next month it will be one year. Okay. But we didn't get to know of it until the thing went viral on the internet. That was 10 months after. Somebody should be the chairman of that local government who should be the chief security officer who told us that he had made efforts but he had reached a dead end they have a dpo who please should secure lives and property but he said he invited babology and invited all of them and that they said they didn't know what happened so it was after 10 months that we got wind of that that we then went out in ensuring that they fish out the perpetrators they smoke them out of their holes from that december 11 Go to Ejibo, leafleted, gave information. Those who have information, people were not willing to, to get that information. And that was why we had to march to the State of House, of House of Assembly and say that in our petition that they should summon the local government chairman to tell us what he has done. Because this same Mr. Kainde Bangbet, the local government chairman, was kidnapped one time and within some few days, they got hold of those who perpetrated the ads. So our people should not keep criminal silence because those who keep silent are uh, that's also conspiracy apart from that conscience is an open wound only truth can heal it so all those who know the truth who are hiding it from us they are also guilty of that so several things that we wanted to do this woman must get justice apart from that the law rule of law is also meant for the weak for those who are below, below, those who cannot afford three square meals, it's also meant for the middle and the lower class. We should not just, these people are Nigerians. They have, we have the same blood that flows in our veins. So they should not be treated as if they belong to the, the lowest ebb of society. We should give them the attention and everything that they deserve. So everybody is equal in the eyes of the law. Um, on that note, we're going to take a short uh, break. We'll be back in a moment, so viewers, stay tuned. of Ejibo, local government, Kai, Kai de Bangbeton, 
at the height of this furor, acknowledged that this unimaginable horror took place in his domain in February this year, and that the victims were a mother and stepdaughter accused of stealing pepper. People get away. It is time that we expect that we enter into the new year. 2014 will not be the same. That will take action, real action that everybody will see because we're not going to keep quiet about this. We are moving forward with using the HBO2 as the front case cool. that it will no longer be tolerated in the United States, particularly in this state. We will not take it anymore. We need not only just, just the good state that does a lot, but we need to see it in action. We are united here not because of anything, but we are united here because of the defense of our women. The women we always taste around. The women we always find favor in. The women we always find sweet love. Do they did not deserve to be treated better. If we do agree that they deserve to be treated better, then whoever must have violated them must be brought to justice. Dr. Joe Odumaki sent me that um, video and I was able to pass it to my colleagues. And I know that today we're going to move a motion asking that not only the police take action, but the um, local government also take action. And by the grace of God, we will identify the perpetrators and bring them to court. Welcome back to the Heart of the Matter, where we're talking to Dr. Jo Odumaki about the incident that happened in Ejibo. She has pretty much been the innocent bystander who happened to come upon the information of what happened in Ejibo nearly a year after it happened. And because of that, and because of her, her desire to see, uh, first of all, that this kind of thing never happens again, and, the, the, and to see justice done, and to see justice meted out to those who were the perpetrators of this act, this is her reason, not only for coming on this program, but for leading a protest, etc., etc., etc. At the very first point I would like to make is that how many Nigerians actually know that even if you catch a person in the act of an offense, of a crime, they are, according to our legal system, innocent until they have been proved guilty by, the, uh, by a court of law. Because very often I see they catch robbers mm. um, also, and they display them and say, these mm. are robbers, but mm. they haven't yet been tried. Mm. How, how, why is it so important that we have a legal system that insists that you have to prove guilt? Honestly, we have a legal system. It's stipulated in our constitution. It's enshrined there. And the thing is that our people, especially those that are within our constituency, those are the ones who should know the law. That when a person is caught, that person still remains innocent until a competent court of jurisdiction says that that person is guilty. Apart from that, when somebody is apprehended, somebody is caught, that person should be taken to the police station. And I think that more than ever, that institution, the police, our people also need to restore confidence in such institution. And the police had always told us that anybody that volunteers information, that person's confidentiality must be guaranteed. And that is why we need to strengthen that institution. And I know that the Inspector General of Police, in taking over this case, has said people should volunteer information. And people, we are all, what we want to let people realize is that the police are our friends. And in order for we citizens to have that confidentiality, they must also treat people as one. Now, our judicial system must be strengthened. Strengthened in such a way that they should dispense off with cases as fast as possible. And that is why we also think that there, I mean, it's, it's a trend. Somebody is picked up, somebody has. What exists in some of our markets is so mind boggling, it's worrisome, it's sickening. Because I really think that if this art has not become a recurring decima, something like that cannot happen. And then you take those people and you go and start treating them such way. You have people around, you have the police station that is very close, nobody even bothered. And that is why our people must learn to agonize less and organize for change. That is only when we can bring about results and change. So just looking at the judicial system you talked about, the first thing is the citizen must know that he has a right to, to prove his innocence. Um, 
and then and that means that they have a right to defend themselves they have a right to say no i'm not guilty and and um, put up their own case without that no no law can no court can can convict them then you've talked about the police and their responsibility in ensuring that that they give victims of crime as well as the perpetrators of, cr of crime a fair a fair hearing and then the judicial system because it, it's not uncommon for people to spend years in in prison on remand waiting for their case to come up and that really oughtn't be the case i mean yes you have to detain some people while they're still being tried even though they're technically innocent but because of the prospect of fleeing mm. um, uh, um, th then, then you have to bring them before court. Now, how often do you think a jibo happens in other parts of the country? Is this, was a jibo an exception or is this something that you think is common across our country? Is this happening all over the place? I really think that the case of a jibo is something that has been occurring in this country and that is why more than ever we need to purge ourselves. We need another, you, you know, we need to rethink. We need a reorientation. We need to change people's attitude. And people need to be properly oriented. Or, uh, they have to go through proper orientation so that they will know that when things like that happen, they should not be part of it. And one thing again, even in times of war, we still have prisoners of war and they treat them in a very decent manner. Not to talk about the fact that somebody was seen stealing, and at the end, there's no time for the person to defend herself, and people keep beating and injuring the person and maiming the person. Let all the people realize that anyone, every onlooker, like Francois said, is a coward or a traitor. When things happen, you should not see people that look. In the process of seeing those things happen, somebody should please run a report to the police. Somebody will not have phones. Somebody can make contact. And all those people that are beating them because they think they are mob, anyone that is apprehended will answer for all those people that are perpetrating the heinous acts. What is women, women arise doing to educate women to know their rights and responsibilities, particularly in reference to this type of action. For instance, there must have been some women in the crowd. Yes, yes, and it must have also been a woman that her paper was stolen. That I mean, she got to know about it, and then she encouraged them. Yes, it's true. There are women in the crowd. We always try. Women arise. We've tried to sensitize, to educate, even transcribing in, in local dialects that we should be each other's keeper. That no matter what happens, we should give ourselves that shoulder to lean on. Apart from that, we've always tried to tell women that they have that numerical strength and they can use their numerical strength to affect lives positively. So when they also join in a crowd, that means they make life more miserable and difficult for others. And they are the mother of the nation, the conscience of the nation, the lubricant for the survival of any society, and the engine room of the country. So therefore, when anything happens, our women must speak out. They must also have that spirit that says, they should not just look elsewhere. They must get, you know, they, they must be involved because when anything happens, they are the ones that it affects adversely. So our women must show that milk of kindness. They must be, they, they must show compassion. It's not that they are tolerating indecent acts, they are tolerating criminal tendencies, but they should give people rights to defend themselves. And if they do that, then we can get positive results. Okay, now from the Ejibo story, we know that Pepper went missing. And it seems as if one of the women who was tortured benefited from this Pepper, whether it fell and she picked it up. But that woman was earning 100 Naira a day. She'd be at the market all day and at the end of it, she had just 100 Naira to show for it. What 
What do you think can be done to improve the lot of women uh, so that people are compensated properly for the work that they do? I think when we even see women, where, where we have that touch, we have the mother's touch. Like Juliana, unfortunately she's dead now. What the father said is that she resumes 7 o'clock and she closes 7.30 in the evening. And what does she do? She goes to where food is sold. She will help to wash plates, she will help to serve food, she will help to put stick in the fire. At the end of the day, this young lady, this mother is paid 100 naira. That is exploitation of the first order. And the person she's working with is a woman. That one should also realize that what can this 100 naira do? So I really think that... I'm sure one plate of food that she serves mm, yes, is more than 100 naira. It's, it's more than 100 naira. And in fact, when, when this girl was being tortured and they were asking her, have you been stealing pepper? Have you been selling it? She said no. She only took that one because she was hungry. She used it to prepare food for her family. So I think that we need that kind of conduct. We need ethics. We are talking about people's take home pay, taking them home. This, we should not give room for exploitation, dehumanization, degradation of women. Let us see the position that they occupy in our society and see how we can help them. Now, I'm sure that our viewers would like to know the condition of the victims right now, apart from Juliana, it was Juliana that died, um, and the families involved. What is their state now? Maybe somebody watching this program would want to do something to help them. After we got them, and the House of Assembly had the committee reports after the hearing and everything, when they were to give people money, those who volunteered information, they gave them money, then we brought these people, the Pawai Tapa, Nike, and the mother. It was at that point, they then collected them from us, women arise, and handed them over to the office of the public defender. And then that office created by Lagos State. So now the Lagos State people are taking custody of the three of them in order to keep them in a safe place because they will still be useful in terms of giving statements maybe identifying the victims and even when the court you know, process starts. So as, as of today, one is still in, in touch with them and Nigerians should also realize because even the woman herself and the 12-year-old girl still said that up to this moment, in fact, why sitting down is just like a shocking reaction. So the, the, the woman had been made, we made her see a gynecologist and then, although that's after about nine months, because she said when she left, that she just, she was feeling it and she ignored it because she had no money. Even the father of the girl said, when the girl died, there was nothing. They had to dig up a place and put her there. You know, so that level of poverty. Now they are in the custody of, this, of the Office of the Public Defenders, where the victims are now. And we just want the citizens, Nigerians, to understand that these people, Whatever speed they use or they, the, the government use in protecting the rich, the affluent, it should also be applicable to the poor ones because we have the same blood that flows in our veins and they need that protection and that is why they are citizens of this country. So as they are now, the people in the uh, Ejibo, as we speak, I think we still have one or two others that also needs to be apprehended. Those who have information should volunteer information. And by the time it's time for them to be taken to court, they should also know that and be sure that the judicial process will take its course. But these people look at me and ask, is it because we are poor, we have nobody, and they are so scared? We should let them have confidence in Nigeria that their rights will be protected and justice will come their way. Yeah. Well, it's been... Um Nice talking to you. I, 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 I expect that with enlightenment, uh, our people will, will begin to right many of the ills that have been mm. done, particularly to these women. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ogumaki, for, for coming to the heart of the matter. It's and a pleasure, hope, and you are doing a good job. That we will see you again thank on you this so episode. Uh, viewers, we have shown some clips of the incident we have not shown all the clips available to us 
because the graphic uh, content can be quite disturbing for some people. So we've, we've, we've spared you that. But um, let's do something to educate our citizenry, to improve uh, our judicial system, to improve our law enforcement system, and um, make Nigeria a better place for everybody, rich or poor, to live in. We'll look forward to seeing you uh, on the Heart of the Matter again next week. Until we meet again, stay blessed.